Welcome to the Jamoti Podcast. We are all surrounded by amazing coaches and leaders. So let's get an inside look at not just what they do, but how they do what they do. After all, becoming the best versions of ourselves is Jamoti, just a matter of doing it. Coach, how many how many kids do you have now? In your my, kids, my your family. Players. Yes. Yeah, kids, players, you know how that can go. I have two. I have a I have a five year old and a three year old. So I, I can't imagine. I can't imagine being a head coach. I, I didn't really have to do this. Um being a head coach young mm-hmm. myself, but then also having young kids. Mm-hmm. How do you balance that? with the demands of an athletic director and then also as a head coach? I think it's hard. Like it's, there's no magic answer of like you do this and it's great. You know, there's no problem, smooth sailing. And I think a lie that us as coaches here is that everybody has it figured out but me. Like he looks so happy. You know, he does this, he has a family, he's, you know, whatever, but he's always at games and is, I'm sure his wife is so supportive. You know, sometimes that's not the case, right? And I think that's something that the enemy uses. Again. Yeah, sure. yeah, good call. That, oh, man, everybody's got it figured out but me and something's wrong with me. And so don't listen to that. Uh, first off, I, I think it looks different for everybody. Every family is different. Every family dynamic is different. Every, um, you know, things in my family that are okay and work for us may not work for you and your family. So kind of as I talk about some of the things that have been really great for us, you know, if that doesn't work for you, that's okay. Yep. Um, the first thing um, that I have to talk about is my wife, Carly. Um, she is unbelievably supportive um, in what I do. We both work with teenagers. Um, and so she kind of understands the, the, the time and demand that, that, you know, that can take. Um, but one of the things that I wanted to do very early on was let my wife into the program. Uh, she wasn't going to be somebody that I didn't talk about, not because I didn't like her, but just like, oh, like I'm separating family and work yeah, and yeah. weird and, you know, whatever. Like I wanted her to be, I wanted all my players to like, if, you know, walking in the gym, you know, hey, Carly, hey, you know, hey, Mrs. Duke, how are you? I want that to be a part of our program because I think the things that we try to emphasize in our program run right along with that of like, hey, it's a family environment. Like we, you know, if I see your parents in the gym or your sister in the gym or whatever, I'm going to say hi, because I know who they are, you know? So, so, you know, these people, my wife and kids are very important to me. So you should know who they are too, and, and be able to have conversations with them. Um, one of the things, uh, one of the things that she did the first year that I got the job at Grace Prep, she was like, um, I, I want to bake for every, every district win. And I was like, okay, you know, that's awesome. I, I like to eat sweets too. It was great, you know? And, and, uh, as the winds racked up, she was like, okay, maybe, maybe I'll go to once a week, you know, <laughs> like, maybe, you know, but, uh, our players would be like, what is she cookies? What is she making? And then, and then it went to, okay, well, uh, you know, she, uh, she loves to see a dunk. Who doesn't love to see a dunk in a game? It's great. Right. Okay. Well, the first person to dunk gets to choose what I make. Oh man! Cookies or whatever, and that relationship right there was really cool because my my players would then like see her in the stands and be like, you know, what are, what are you making for us? What do you make? You know, after the game, and you yeah. just see that relationship, and and that's a part of letting her into the program. Um, and I, and I feel like um, for her, when she knows my players, she can put faces to names, and when I'm scouting, when I'm at practice late when I'm maybe staying after to talk to a kid, whatever the situation is, she can put a face to the name with who I'm interacting with. Mm. And then it doesn't go from he's choosing the program over me or he's choosing. It's like, man, he could really be blessing that kid. And I'm sure I spend too much time. We all do. We spend too much time at the gym. You know, I'm not perfect at this, but I felt like when I've come home and been able to say like, you know, I was with X player and this is what we were talking about. She was like, well, I'm really glad that you had that time to do that. And it just kind of heads off any like, well, I was 30 minutes late for dinner and you kind of had told me we were going to eat dinner at this time, you know? So I I think that just the family atmosphere is something that we drove uh, home really hard. And I think that's paid off for us um, uh, really, really well. And then I think too, with kids, um, you know, my, uh, my son, that's five, um, 
we had a jersey, gray stripe jersey made for him, you know, and he was all excited about it. We asked him what number he wanted on there. I think he was, he was four years old at the time that we did this. And he said, oh, I want four. And we were like, oh, like, cause you're four years old and you know, whatever. And he goes, no, 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 that's my favorite player. Uh, and it was a kid named Josh. And, and I was like, oh, that's, and he knew him by name. And uh, that was his favorite cool. player. So we have this picture, I think it was after the first game of our season last year. And, uh, and, and Josh and Sawyer, my son, are standing right next to each other, both holding up fours in their four jersey. And it was like, it was, it was like a moment of like, you know, that, that is 95% of what I do. You know, like, that's why I do what I do right there. That moment, that picture, um, you know, letting, letting my family into it, you know, my players embracing them like their family. Um, I don't think my kids will ever regret growing up coaches kids. If that's the type of interactions that they have. Well said, man. Uh, you know, I've I had the chance of talking with a lot of coaches about this topic because you're right, it is hard. And Mike Neighbors and Jamin Copeland, yeah. you know, different coaches, different levels, different ages, but both similar. And, and you basically said the same thing. This idea of balance. Good luck. Right. Good luck. Because and, and so Mike Neighbors said, stop trying. Stop trying to balance it. Bring them together. Bring them together. I love the idea of your your wife really being invested in those players and those relationships. And I don't know if you've had conversations like this, but by bringing Jana in, she watches the games differently. Like Some guys say, like, don't bring the game home with you. Leave it at the gym. I can't do that. I can't do that. And, and and here's the thing. Like, I love getting to talk with my wife about our team. I love getting, there have been times that she, cause she grew up, she grew up a coach's um, uh, daughter and, you know, her dad was a football coach for 30 plus years and uh, she's seen it. She's been around it, but there's times where she would give me really good feedback on body language on things that she saw on players that stood out. And, and there's been times where I come in the next day and I let my guys know, like guys, you know, my wife saw this and she's, she's right. You know, like it's just bringing it all together. But now keeping like, let's just say it's a hard loss. And if you are the kind of coach that takes those really hard, right. You know, is resulting hardcore after, yeah, don't take that home. Like, don't make your home miserable because of that. But the idea that you can truly separate the two, I don't know. That yeah, just seems it, hard. It's super hard. And and I think, um, you know, us having kind of a routine for when I get home from games um, it is also really good. Like, I, I'm, I'm a processor. Um, I'm, I'm not and, – and I'm an internal processor. Um, and so, you know, there, if you catch me at the wrong time, my answer could be way different and, and emotional. Yeah. Uh, it, and then if you give me some time to flesh that out, I've probably already had the conversation in my head, you know? Um, and so, you know, very early on when we didn't have kids, you know, it was a lot easier, obviously, but we'd go to breakfast the next morning. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we wouldn't, you know, fr- like Friday nights, Friday night game, uh, you know, get home, um, you know, we wouldn't talk about the game or kind of what happened, especially, you know, if, if it was kind of something where I was bummed out about kind of what happened, um, you know, we kind of have some space, but the next morning we'd go to breakfast and we'd be able to, to talk. And so I think it's finding rhythms like that, 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 uh, that just enable you to be, uh, the best spouse, uh, and, and the best, you know, person in general it, it is probably, uh, good. And then I think, you know, the other thing that, that is crucial for us is you know my wife knows that basketball season is 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 busy and tough and it's demanding like those are things that will never change it doesn't matter if we're good if we're not good it, you know i mean it's just, it's busy and it's demanding and and she gives me so much grace with that of how i handle it but then on the other end um prioritizing off nights yeah you know putting the ball back in my court right like we talked about a lot about what she does right well, something that we can do is protecting those off nights, you know, um, in, in, in focusing on her, maybe going on a date, focusing on our family, 
Um, those are things that I think kind of give me more grace from her perspective that like, okay, he's very busy. He's doing these things. He's scouting. He's, he's at practice. He's watching film. He's coaching, managing personalities. But then on that one chance that he did have to give our family some time, he did do that. Yeah. I, I think that kind of is an action step for us as coaches. And, and I feel like halfway through the year, I get kindly reminded of that every year. <laughs> You're right. Well, I need, it's my fault, you know? In, on that, to that point, you know, one of the things that thankfully my, my wife's only had to say it a few times over the last 10 years, especially is, uh, I feel like I'm second right now. Yeah. And like, that's just a feeling, man. Like, uh -huh. I don't want, I don't want her to ever feel that, that basketball, uh, this job, my players are in some ways more important and more of a priority. Sure. And so, like, I think a good goal for me for as long as I do this is never to hear that again from her. Oh. But but if it does, okay, I, I hear you. You're what right. a great thing to model to our players, though. Yep. Right? Yeah. It, it's letting them in on, on as much as is appropriate, letting them in on some of that stuff. Because at the end of the day, we know that, like, basketball is also not going to be always be 1A. Yep. You know, and, and if we're expecting that – from them and not giving them any grace, but then the second that maybe our spouse says something challenging to us in that regard and we get defensive, you know, you're like, hold on, I feel like this is a learning in a, in a, in a teachable moment for everybody involved in that. Thank you for checking out today's episode. Please take a moment to subscribe to this podcast, share it with your fellow coaches, and find us on social media for what's coming up next on the Jamoti podcast. It's just a matter of doing it.